Okay, my name is Michael Welk and I'm heading up the Asset Management and Optimization Program. So we just settling in, we uh, uh, developed a working group and it grows because we also get someone from City West Water into this group next time we meet. So we had two meetings and identified a number of really two projects we like to look into. So in the S management space, we were looking at how we can assist water corporations with the AMAF requirements, which is the S management accountability framework. So we have a common approach to deliver the data to, to the Department of Treasury and Finance. So we looked at trying to get this done before the end of financial year. However, this was very uh, short time, so we didn't achieve this. But what we're now planning to do is we actually uh, like to uh, do a survey later on. So in my presentation, also the other point which we like to do is looking at uh, methods of optimizing our assets through sensing. So this feeds into the data analysis and big data stuff. So where do we like to place our sensors strategically to get the data to get a problem resolved? So in my presentation, uh, I work on the scanning project which I started doing. Uh, the pump checker, which is uh, one from the previous time coming from Northeast Water and continuing with this, I started collaboration with MIT and Wasser. Uh, then I spoke already about the AMAF and the asset optimizations presentation which were done for the working group and I'd like to share this with you. So the scanning project, and I had this presentation before, it is, what we like to do is using existing technology like x-ray at the dentist where you have a plate and then x-ray source and then penetrate water assets. So this could be a pipe, it could be a valve, it could be a pump, non-return valve. And we see how the condition is inside without opening it. So we've done this in labs. We have, and this is a common technology to prove wells. So, and, and these are the results we have had from, from an LC main. So the, the black one is uh, X-rays. And the, and the middle one is done with a backscatter scanner, which comes from Canada, which is similar to the, the one with the plate, but the plate is actually on the outside. And the, the X-rays come in to the object, reflect them, and then the plate on the outside receives this and makes a picture. And, and this, both of them can show you the density of an AC mine. So you can see if it's a soft AC mine or not. And then, we also were able to actually stitch those photos together like an CT scan and we get a 3D model. So this is all the things we've done in a lab, but when it comes to doing it on site, it looks all different. So I tried to get a business case together, but looking at it, it was too expensive. So I continued just within Garden Valley Water and another water authority. So this is an outcome of, of a water mine. It is very difficult to see now the difference because water in, in, inside of the pipe actually uh, absorbs the X-rays. And I could have known this out of atomic reactors. I worked for a company who had them. Water is the thing which you actually put the, uh, the X-rays in to, to not let them penetrate the X-rays to the outside. So that was, it shows something. You can measure the thickness of the mine but that's about it. And if you go to steel pumps and non-return valves and all those things, the entire screen is just black. So this is obviously not a way we con can continue. We can now start using a different source. So this is an, just an X-ray source. We can use ga gamma sources. We also found out in the meantime that if we expose it longer with the X-ray, we actually might get bit clearer pictures. So we, we just have another go at this and see how we go there. But the other thing is the backscatter scanner, which comes from Canada and it's from Inversa. There has been a trial done. And on a day they did 19 scans. And the only holdup was really digging up to the pipe. So they could have scanned much, much quicker. 
uh, if they are prepared as scanning holes, and the costs are quite extreme, and this is why the big trial was so expensive. This is close to a six-digit number, these 19 samples. So, but the outcome of it is this. So at, you see again a AC mine, and you can see at the top you've got pretty much a full strength AC mine. But here at the bottom, you see it, it starts getting thinner. So it's similar to a fennel filing testing. So wherever it's pink or dark pink, it is strong material. Where it's softer, it is softer material as well. So this is quite pr promising, but very expensive. So now I get to the pump checker. So pump checker, I haven't done much more with this. I got in contact with RMIT, which is the most promising they like to take on because we, the IP was with GHD to get the algorithm. And RMIT is trying to do another algorithm, which does the same thing, and we can just put it in our SCADA data. I had a conversation with University of Adelaide, but it seems to be that they are not capable of doing it. Then I also with RMIT, I had a few other projects, which I invited RMIT to come in, in Garden Valley Water and just walk around and talk to all the operators. So we looked at efficiency of pumps, which is the pump checker really, then examine the majority of the, uh, we look at the data we have in SCADA because we don't use the data. So they just take all the data out of SCADA and just try to find patterns. And can we do something with the data from the air writer or can we do something with the data from the pumps or the water levels or whatever it is, can we just get some sense out of this? So this is what they like to help us with. Then the next one would be looking at hedge to hedge protection of uh, concrete. So we do epoxy coating or keg coating and, and all those different things, but there was done by WASA, there was a score program which recommended not to use epoxy in other plastic coatings and more the keg ones. So we like to review all this research and actually get something out of, for us, practical. Because WASA was going to do this and they were to just summarize all the findings out of the 200 different papers, but I haven't got any a result out of this. So this is what they like to is help us with. Then leak detection, uh, I get to this in a minute, it's a uh, Band Brain, that's a Spanish company and I've got a little bit they have presented to us. And RMIT would like to do something similar to this as well. Then flow patterns in lagoons, so how water flows through a lagoon and how it impacts on the clarifying the waste water. So this is what we like to do there. Then with the collaboration with WASA, uh, I was invited to go to the innovation working group of WASA. They have separated the R&D managers group into two. So there's now the research group and the innovation group, which is the D part from R&D. And Colburn Water is on it, and now I am as well. So I. I try to become the liaison person between IWN and WASA in this space. And part of this, we actually got invited to a workshop of a group called NSSN. That's the New South Wales Smart Sensing Network. I got this right. So, and because I thought I'm not the right person to go though, I might know a little bit, but there are more people around who know more. So I asked, because it was a quick invitation, so I asked others to come on board, and David and Richard from Western Water, they were able to go. And instead of rephrasing what David knows, I just asked David for a minute yeah. to just explain what, I've, what he found. <laughs> I'm not sure I was the right person to go either, but I went anyway. <laughs> um, so it was a nice day in Sydney. Um, so the New South Wales Smart Sensing Network, it's a collaboration of six New South Wales universities funded by the New South Wales Department of Industry um, with the mandate for um, bringing together for collaboration around sensing um, and in networks, so hence their title. Um, so this was their first entry into the water industry 
It was uh, a session set up in collaboration with Sydney Water, so um, through Michael's connection, we were fortunate enough to be invited uh, along. So it was a half day session where Sydney Water outlined their problems. Um, there was also other Sydney uh, councils there as well, and, and us of course, describing and, uh, the common issues we have in our industry. So representatives from those six universities, some pretty highbrow uh, kind of people, pretty smart people in the room. Um, some of them listened, some of them um, talked back to us about all the smart things they're, they're doing, but at the end of the day, uh, quite a few problem statements were created, which now the network will take away. Uh, digest a bit more and bring back to the group. So the positive is um, we have a seat at the table now in terms of what they bring back to us. Uh, we'll see the projects and the proposals from there and we, because we have that seat at the table, we have the opportunity to say, yeah, we'll buy into that, we'll invest in that, we'll be a part of that, or no, if you carry on on your own way. Thank, Thank you. you. So what also was the question, are this, is this network working with the Victorian water industry because it's funded through the government from New South Wales? So the answer is yes. So if there is a project and they need someone to actually carry out a trial or whatever it is, they would accepting us as a trial base. Okay, so I go next to the self-assessment tool. So we went through and looked at what, what is required and, and where are we already having uh, documents which assist us in, in informing the attestation for AMAF. So I started with WASA because we had the benchmarking exercise. So there are 500 questions and, and then I asked Greg how, we, how can we reshape this to, to something we can use for the Victorian water industry. Uh, he said I'm happy to assist you there. So that was the first thing. So I went also to GHD and IACOM and asked them if they can help us with a guide, guideline and, and some tool where we actually have some questions, we just answer the question and the outcome and then you get the writing. So, so whatever the uh, consultants would do for you, instead of paying $50,000 for each consultancy by 17 or 18 water authorities, we just get pay one time $50,000 and we all to use the tool and off we go. And it's all for all of us cheaper and we have a common approach uh, to the Department of Treasury and Finance. So the other thing was, uh, through all those conversations, I came across the IAM, which is a UK-based tool that's accessible to everyone, which I found out through the help from uh, Western Water, because you can have a one-year membership and you can free membership, and then you can actually download the tool and use this tool and you can at, at, assess yourself against ISO 55000 and then use this for your attestation. And then I didn't really know that this is actually free for us for a year or if you downloaded it you have it on your computer and then you keep it there but that's up to you. I asked Big Water if they would support us. So Big Water would have been happy to, to pay for a license or something so we can have this common tool. So East Gippsland had a different approach. They had just an Excel spreadsheet with questions and they, they filled out and this was made available. So this is something we can potentially lay, later on put on the uh, TIM platform if this comes available. And Barwon Water went back to Greg Ryan and said, look, I now aligned the AMF questionnaires with the AMF requirements with your WASA benchmarking question. Can you put together a, a thing where we, we can then go through like the bank benchmarking exercise? And I think it was only a small number, 50 questions or something. And then you, we all can go in who participated in this WASA project and then just answer those questions and we get an outcome for the attestation. So. But because we are now so close to the end of financial year, we said we stop here. So you, you kind of got the information and I might send this around. What we like to do next is, we, because we are pretty light and everyone is doing it already, we actually do a survey at the end of financial year or after the end of financial year, find out what approach each water authority had, then evaluate it against what the 
the reply was from the consultants or the, the auditors you have in your organization and then say, look, this was questioned and this was not quite right. This one went well and so we can share then the learnings out of this and prepare a tool out of this. So the next thing is the presentations to our working group. So we had three companies presenting in our last workshop. One of them was made and this is about the process of a corporation. So the PNID is pretty much. You populate all these and then you you can put against all these items maintenance requirements, but you also can put in uh, what are the failure modes. And then depending on the failure modes, if a series of failures happen, it might crash the plant. So this tool then can identify where to put a sensor to actually monitor at one point a series of other failures which can occur in the system. So if this sensor goes off, this means this and this has happened. So you don't have to wait till three things happen. The sensor is strategically placed in the system to actually identify this before the failure occurs. So, but it is a very complicated process and in, in most water authorities we, we decided that we don't have PNDs for the entire process of uh, treatment plants. And so we thought it's not something we should attempt now. So we just put this on hold and, and look at this possibly at the later stage. Then we have seams which uh, Brett talked about and he explained what uh, this was. So they have a tool where you can actually predict failures in the future, so similar to, to PALMS, which some people in this room know. So you can predict your failure, you can put your maintenance cost against it, and you can then look at the to total tax costs and when to replace certain assets. But this is not only for water mines, it is for everything in your water authority. So as it was a flagship project, we like to do a trial, and there is City West Barbon Water, there are already some, some interested. So we like to do a trial, and unfortunately I couldn't arrange this beforehand because uh, the representative of Seams was sick, so I would have done it before this. I wanted to do it before this, but it didn't happen. So the third and last presentation we, we got was from a Spanish company uh, called Bund Planet, and the product they sell is uh, Bund Brain. What it is, it is <coughs> usually when you have a leak detection system, and that really falls in Dean's area, uh, you, you have an area shut off, and you put a flow meter in, you've got digital meters at the customer's end, and you compare the two numbers if they match or not. If they don't match, you have a leak in there. But this works a bit different. What it does is you place every 15, a 10 to 15 k's, and this is the network, so you have to add up all the different pipes together, make a bunch of 15 k's of mains, and then you place a water meter somewhere. So I think we can put flow meters in, in small mains, so 100 mils mains, so the flow meters are not too expensive. So then for Shepton it would be roughly, I think it's, how long is Shepton? It's six, seven k's long and three k's wide. So for this area, we roughly would need 29 flow meters. What we also need for this, because we don't have those shutoff blocks or those DMs, uh, D set, uh, DM sets, uh, we, we need the hydraulic modeling. So what it does then, it, it looks at the flows in the network. So if you're, for example, at one flow at night time, it, it drops and then it just goes at the flatter right, and then it comes up, and then all of a sudden this pattern changes and it drops to zero. So to me, I thought, oh, that's fine. There's no water flow, and that's not a problem. But it is, because if you have a leak before the flow meter, the water is taken away from there, and it can't pass this flow meter, it actually 
comes in from the back. So you will see a rise of flow at the other end. So looking at this, this Y, you actually can identify together with the hydraulic modeling very easily where leaks occur and they can identify the area, and this is just a city block roughly, where the leak is. What they also provide is, and this is where asset management comes in, is a tool to actually look at the maintenance of uh, meters at the customer. So the meter at the customers, they don't have to be digital. The, the meters can be just read three monthly or four monthly, whatever the water authority does. And then the data is put in and then it analyzes the age. That's one criteria. So is it old enough to be replaced? Is the data reliable? Did some change occur? So then, then you've got, uh, say, no, no water flowing, or if there more flow is occurring, then we can go to the customer and say, do you have a leak in your property? So all those things can be analyzed. And, and then they also identify if the flow meter is the correct size of the customer. Because if the flow meter is too small, it doesn't catch up with the water going through. So it actually doesn't show you the actual meat, uh, water they use. Or is the flow meter too big? It doesn't capture the low flow. So what they have shown in Spain and in Germany is that when you are using this tool to actually make sure that the measuring accurate, within five years, you would get the cost back for the new flow meter and for the work you do to replace this water meter. And that's for me. Thank you. <laughs>